Hello everyone, this is Gazalem with Jason and the Boys, and we are here with another Warframe video. This one is going to be a part of a new series of videos just on how to do different Steel Path mission types, because I believe in general there are lots of frames that are very good for Steel Path, but not everyone may have those, or not everyone may have all the powerful mods to go with them. So I'm coming up with several different solutions that will help you complete different mission types, in efficient ways and within your power level hopefully so yeah today we are going to go over how to do a defense mission in steel path and when i started out doing steel path over on nintendo switch i had the absolute hardest time doing steel path missions especially because people just plain don't join steel path missions a lot of times like it's just like not that common to see people doing random steel path missions just like on random nodes in star chart like you can see zero open squads zero open squads zero open squads so yeah it can be kind of hard to get help if you're just like trying to clear the steel path star chart so i will show you how to do defensive missions at least today okay so an obvious pick is going to be wisp if you have her um of course you all know if you've seen our videos that we all love wisp she is super amazing her passive makes her invisible in air makes her very survivable in steel path any mission defense especially her ability of her first also heals allies as well as defense objectives if you will notice so you can actually cast that on the defense target and it will heal it as well super super nice see so yeah, wisp is a good pick but i won't be using her today just because you all know how great she is already um, other good picks, I would say, is Wukong, of course. He's got that Celestial Twin. He's also, you know, nigh unkillable because of his passive of being able to be killed three times in a row without, like, not actually dying. So he is very good that way, survivability-wise. Also, if you have a good weapon, his Celestial Twin can pack quite a punch. So yeah, Wukong is always a good pick. Saren, of course, very nice. We also have our Nova, although if you're doing a solo defense, I wouldn't suggest using Nova, but if you're doing a group defense mission with multiple people, I'd say you can take a Nova, make her a speed va, you know, put her power strength down, that way you can just speed enemies up and they will take more damage. Also Korra is really, really good for steel path defense. All you need is, you know, the augment that makes her whip claw continue to deal more damage as the combo ramps up that will make her very powerful with her dome also some other very good ones frost can be nice you know his um bubble can help you know freezing lots of enemies also ember is always a really nice one you know just dripping enemy armor and just absolutely annihilating maps um mesa is nice um if you're going solo you're gonna want some survivability on mesa so it depends on how strong your guns are if your guns are strong enough and you can just erase people by looking at them then you could probably go with her solo so always a good pick um but the one i'm going to show you today is zephyr zephyr is a really good defense frame steel path very good at crowd control um, zephyr's passive is absolutely amazing you get that extra crit chance in the air and so i'm going to show you how we can do that also, Zephyr's number three makes him nigh unkillable with bullets, so that way no, nothing other than like explosive projectiles or things that are melee striking you will really be able to touch you while this duration is going on. So yeah, just to show you my Zephyr build, I have got Aerodynamic Aviator, you know, just to get that damage reduction in the air, because why not? I've also got a good bit of ability duration on, you know, got some prime continuity, a Gur message. We got a bunch of reach. Um, you're going to want primed flow on, especially if you're using his first ability as a um, continued drain just to keep you in the air. I replace his first ability with breach surge because why not? And just because I usually aim glide anyways. And I've also got lots of ability strength. So, you know, I don't have my ability strength too crazy high. I don't really rely on that too much. I mostly rely on his three for survivability, and this just for general crowd control. 
and then you can use a good weapon to destroy. Good weapons, you know, you just want something that deals lots of damage. I got Tenna Envoy, of course. I got a build video up in the top right right here, if you ever want to see that. And, yeah, just basically, that's what we'll go with today. Okay, let us get into a mission and see how we do. Go over to Mars here, and we'll select this defense since I haven't done it yet. Alright, something to remember is that it is always nice to have allies with you on Steel Path. But of course, you might always not have that choice of actually having allies in your squad. Like in my case, nobody has joined. So there are a couple options you can do. You can bring specters along with you. So I shall show you some of the ones I've got. Um, shield Osprey specters, those can always be very nice. Clem specters, just to draw fire, because why not? Um, On-call crewmates, I would highly recommend these guys. Um, all you have to do is upgrade your Railjack Intrinsics and you have to be like pretty close to max on one of them before you can unlock the on-call crewmate but he is very nice and i'd say it's worth doing that intrinsic if only for him because it's like a free specter you can always cast whenever also i've got some vapor specters i've got a wisp vapor specter i believe so i can throw her down and i've also got a gara vapor specter so both of those are really nice um, if you have a gara i'd say just like throw her in the middle the nice thing about Vapor Spectres is their level actually scales with the enemy you're facing. So the Swiss Spectre I just placed is level 113. Very nice. There we go. So as Zephyr, I'll just go ahead and hold down my 4 to make the tornadoes stay in place where I want them to. And I'm not really going to use them too much for damage because my gun doesn't really need help since the infested are weak. But if you're going against stronger enemies, you might want to actually mod your weapon to fit with the tornadoes. You know, have gas damage or something like that. Just so you can absolutely eliminate anyone who gets caught in your tornadoes. Of course, general steel path stuff that's always really helpful is upgrading your Zenerik um, Energizing Dash. That will help you keep your energy high. And that is very, very nice as well. You know, you always want energy in steel path if you run out. It can be really bad, especially when you're solo. And also something to keep in mind with your specters is that if you have any like really powerful weapons, I would suggest um, applying them to your specters. Um, and I would especially recommend applying AOE weapons to your specters. So if you've got something in the, like Envoy, um, Kuba Orgris, the Archiplasmor, or if you've got a you know like of course Kuba Brahma. And, um, or even like if you have something like the Ignis Wraith, that can also work really well with Spectres because it seems like they never even lose, it seems like they never run out of ammo. So, you know, you can just give them whatever weapon you want to, and they will be totally fine. Great, we are three waves in. One thing to keep in mind is if you're doing a solo defense, there is a good chance that the Acolyte will show up, just because when you're solo, you aren't killing people quite as fast as with a full squad. So, um, the timing might work out that the Acolyte shows up before your fifth wave is done. And that can be really scary, because you don't want the Acolyte to spawn right on top of your defense target, because there are times when he can literally one-shot it. So, you, when he spawns, you want to make sure you're kind of like standing away from it. And you want to make sure you keep the battle away from the target. But you also want to make sure that the people that are attacking the target aren't going to be disturbing it. So that's another reason why Zephyr is great. You can just cast your 4 on the defense target. And then leave it for like 30-40 seconds if you need to. And you don't really have to worry about it unless there's like null fires around. Just because those tornadoes will keep that target safe. All right, we got an Acolyte coming in. It's about the end of wave five, so I want to save the last couple of these enemies because I want to get that sweet steel essence from this guy. So I'll go ahead and cast my four. Oh, looks like the Acolyte is down there. So I'm going to take him out. You know, you want to prime him up, so I'll go ahead and throw some status effects on him. Oof, oof, oof. Oh, he almost got me. Man, my specter is just shredding him. There we go. Not too bad. You know, just throw some status effects on him. Shred him. Easy peasy. And then you can head out. 
There we go. And that is how you do a steel path mission easy peasy. Of course, if I didn't have any Spectre blueprints, I could have done that just about just as easily with the Zephyr. Um, it just would have taken a little bit longer since I wouldn't have had their help with all the kills. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you have any other tips for newer players trying out Steel Path, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Boy!